I was asked by the textile uh, department of the museum to bring this uh, replica 1872 dress. This dress I made in Italy with my students at the National School of Cinema in Rome and uh, is made with the same principles that uh, a seamstress would have used to make the same dress in the year 1872. Firstly, next to her skin, a lady of the time would have worn um, a long chemise and drawers. Over this, on goes the corset, it is clipped on the front and then it, the laces get tied at the back. It is pulled at the waist so that one can achieve the maximum tension at that point, which wants to be the tightest. A high-class lady to do this would have been helped by her maid, but working-class ones would have just had to do this on their own. And although it might seem difficult, it has been proved that a, a lady can get into her corset by herself. Although this might seem as a very uncomfortable piece of clothing, um, it is not as rigid as uh, modern corsets would be. Because of the use of natural whalebone, which um, becomes soft with the heat of your body, the next item of clothing is the bustle. It is put on from the back so that you can center it on the person. And then you just put the waistband over the corset and buckle it very tight over the waist. It's got to be tight because otherwise with the weight of the skirts, the thing will just move or will come down. This is made with uh, spring steel. So that although, again, this might seem as a very rigid piece of clothing, it is in reality very light and it really collapses easily. At the back of the bustle, there are two lacing strips. These are there so that you can change the shape of the bustle depending on the style of dress that you wanted to wear. The next item of clothing is the petticoat. Again, because you can change the shape of the bustle, you have to be able to adapt the shape of the petticoat to it. So this petticoat can be worn with either a wider or a smaller bustle. There is a hook at the center front of the corset and there is a buttonhole slit on the waistband of the, of the petticoat and this is to keep it into position so that it will not rise over your waist during the day. Next comes the skirt. What is uh, quite special about skirts of this period is that it was quite common to have a dress made with two different bodices, one for evening wear and one for day wear. So the skirt would have been made up with a long train, which then by means of interior tapes, you can lift up so that the skirt becomes leveled for day wear. The next item of clothing is the tablier. This is just a decorative overskirt draped at the back and as the rest of the dress, it is made of silk file decorated with strips of silk taffeta. So it's a very light item of clothing. The last item of clothing is the bodice. As you can see, uh, there is an interior waistband which gets hooked around the waist and this prevents the bodice to rise up when you lift your arms uh, and is then buttoned and hooked at the center front. As the rest of the dress, it is decorated with pleated bands of the silk file and bands of the silk taffeta. Wearing a dress like this means that you will get to stand in a completely different way. Partly because of the corset, which keeps you always in an upright position, and partly because of the bustle at the back, which sort of makes you stand and balance yourself in a very, very different way.
although in the filming uh, it seems to take a long time to put it on in real life i could say that you can put on a dress like this in maximum a quarter of an hour although this dress is not going to be displayed in the gallery you will be able to see an original from the same period and which has been made in a very very similar fashion 